All right, let's see what we got here. Change that, change that. There she is. Good morning. Good morning, Sunshine. How are you? The sun is shining and we out here grinding. You know how it is. This is very true. So you're working on your first subject to do? I am, indeed. Are you afraid yet? I've been terrified. I feel like I'm jumping off a cliff and um, the cliff <laughs> keeps getting higher. Then I ask more questions, it gets a little lower, but it's still a cliff. Exactly. You can <laughs> rappel down, you can jump down, you can do all around, and it's still a cliff. Right. And, so, and so you found you a motivated seller, I guess, and they ready to let this thing go. So what's the what's the story on them? He is. So he got a divorce. He has two little boys. Him and the wife were living happy family. Now wife moved out. Of course, he can't afford it now. He's at the point to where he maxed out all of his credit cards and he needs to move like immediately. Dang. And he got he has means to move already or is it more so you're going to have to get him some money to help him move? No, he said he's already good. He has a place to at least stay and go take care of his boys. So I don't know if that's family or, or what, but uh, he at least has somewhere to stay. So he said he doesn't have to get any money in his pocket, but I would like to if that's possible. So. He said, no money. He must have liked you. Then. He must say, just take my house. Just here. Just take it over. I'm like, I like that. That's my talk. <laughs> hey, like, okay. I'll see what I can do. Okay. So what's the condition of the house? Does it need a lot of repairs or anything? Or Paint. It's 2015 built. So it just oh. needs paint on the cabinets. I, I tried to move into it, but where I'm at now, it's like it wouldn't have been beneficial. Too far from work. But I would have moved into it. That's how nice it looks. Okay, let me see here. So you sent me some numbers on here. Let's see. ARV is 215. He owes 188. And let's see. 1469. Is that monthly payment principal interest taxes and insurance all inclusive? Correct. P I T I. And he had a 30 year loan and he doesn't he wants to sell without gaining anything. Well, he is gaining something. You know that, right? You well, know what he's gaining? Debt relief of debt. That's right. <laughs> debt relief, baby. Relieve me of this payment. I can't make it. Is he behind or is it current? It's current. Oh, man. Well, you got slam dunk then. So what kind of questions did you have for me in regards to this deal? So I saw your post. You mentioned um, my, bank, my main question about him filing bankruptcy. So you said put it in a trust. Somebody else also said LLC. Which one is the best? Well, from what I understand... People can have done it in LLCs, but I, I don't do it that way. From what I understand, you know, when you put it in a trust or close and take title to the property in a trust, uh, it prohibits the bank from calling the loan due. That's all it is. Because there's a law that came out in, I think, early 1980s uh, that, that made it so basically it prohibits the bank from calling the loan due. Now, I see a lot of people that do them and they just put them in the LLCs and they don't call the loan due as well, but I just don't do it that way. So I just don't even, I just go the way that I know that gives that extra layer of protection to say that it prohibits the bank from calling that loan due. And that's what you want to, you know, keep it that way. You don't want no stuff to come up, especially on a brand new house. When you got a situation like this, you know, it's like, it ain't like they can't take it back and resell it or do something with it, you know, even though they probably right. wouldn't, but we don't want to give them any incentive or anything to want to alert them to do something like that. Right. Okay. And then when I'm setting up that trust, do I need an attorney to go about setting up this trust or is it the same as doing an LLC? Well, there's actually some uh, documents you would need. You need a, a a warranty deed to trustee. It's just a document. That's the document they're going to actually record at the courthouse. And uh, then you need a, a trust agreement. And that, that document does not get recorded. You just file that away at home in your file cabinet or, you know, nobody knows who the beneficiary is or anything like that. You just have to, you know, come up with a trustee to be the trustee or either, you know, um, You'll have them do it in the closing paperwork. Basically, you need to get a real estate attorney to close this transaction, though, either way. Okay. So you want to make sure that's because they're going to give them some disclosures and things like that to just basically say they know that the loan is staying in their name and all of that. So it's not like you tricked them because you, right. you could do these deals over a kitchen table. People don't know that, but it's better to have that layer of protection. So five years later, they don't come back and say, hey, yeah, she stole my house and tricked me. <laughs> You know, right. people always right. crop out later on when things get better and they forgot how you saved they butt. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I do have okay. those documents as well on wokerealestate.com, the, the, the trust agreement and documents, everything you would need as far as that stuff. So, I mean, it, it's just some paperwork. When you do these uh, type of creative deals, it's just more paperwork. That's the only thing that's kind of scary because you go from a regular wholesale deal where you just got to 
purchase and sales agreement and an assignment agreement to this stuff where you got 15 documents. And you're like, oh man, who doing all that? Right, right. <laughs> so you definitely want to get somebody in your uh, market. Where are you where are you at anyway? Okay, see, Oklahoma City. Okay, Oklahoma City. Yeah, you just need somebody there that can close these type of deals. That's all. And what type of uh, exit strategy were you planning on doing with this if you were uh, able to pull it off? Lease option. Um, and that was part of my questions to you. <laughs> I was thinking of market to a tenant buyer uh, with the lease option to purchase it. So that way the debt is kind of like stays with them and not me. I want it to be, uh uh, what happened? And knock me off. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want it to be, um, I wanted them to carry the debt. So my question was is it possible for me to do a subject to and it'll be in my name to start? And then kind of transfer it to them name their name like sell the whole subject to contract to the tenant buyer uh that way i can just get a deposit and get out is that possible or is that not how subject to works that is possible it's just do you want to do that it's more so anything's possible almost when it comes to this creative real estate it's just when you weigh out the options you look at it like do you want to stay in the deal and get that passive cash flow for no reason for some work you did last year or do you just okay. want to get in and get out of signing and I don't want to be in it no more? You can't assign anything. That's totally okay. up to you. But, you know, you know, sometimes with these type of deals, um, like you say, what is it? Fourteen sixty nine a month. Say you get somebody in there to rent it for two thousand a month. That's five hundred dollars going in hip pocket National Bank for month after month after month after month. How many of them do you need before you're out of a job? OK. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's up to you, you know, when it comes to that. But, you know, it just depends on what the numbers are. If it's just no, you know, no money in it, you can't do it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you, you could do it that way. I just wouldn't suggest doing it that way. OK. All Is right. You're planning on doing. Do you want to stay in to get a cash flow or do you think you want to uh, just get out of it altogether? Because I was so scared of subject two, I was like, let me just do it. Get my toe in and get out. <laughs> so well, I just want to collect it. Like I said, you can wholesale it if you want to. You can lock it up and wholesale it to somebody else and they close on it and do all of that. But then you got to find somebody who know how to do all of that, too. You see, you right. put yourself right back in the box, you know, and, and, and that's and that's kind of risky. You know what I'm saying? You could do it that way. You just have to have other disclosures to say that, you know, that the seller know that you're assigning it to somebody else and that buyer knows that they're taking over this thing and everybody and they put they, they both relieve you of responsibility all of this stuff is just a bunch of legal mumble jumbo you don't want right. something to come back on you later that's really the biggest thing with this stuff right you know right. even though when they sell a house subject to they really don't have any recourse that's the only uh bad thing when they do sell a house like this and a lot of people you know talk about subject to subject to but a lot of times you want to buy these houses on a wrap where there's an extra layer of protection for the seller so say if that seller and you sell them the house and you stop making payments for some reason in the future, they can foreclose on you. Right. And they show it helps them wipe out the debt to income ratio. Say five years later, they get their credit together and their life together and they want to buy another house. They got this debt sitting on there. It could possibly help them get qualified for a loan in the future. So that's why it's usually better to do a wrap for it than a subject to a pure subject to that loan stays in their name. And it's just going to stay on there until the end of time, until you either pay it off, cash it out or, you know, do something with it. So, okay. that you know, it's kind of, you know, just kind of depends on the deal. All right. So if I do a wrap, does my that's one of my questions, too. Does my debt to income ratio go up if I do a wrap? Is, this, is that saying that I owe that? Well, the good thing is no matter which way you do this, none of this goes in your name other than the deed. You get no debt. No credit check. Nobody's going to pull your file. Say, what's your credit score? You got a 700 or 600. We don't care. That's the thing about this creative real estate. You don't need any credit score whatsoever. You just need this, that specialized knowledge to know how to pull it off. So that's, that's the good thing about it. You're not responsible for it at all. Okay. Sounds good to me. Well, I, I, let me, let me, let me rephrase that. I wouldn't say at all. You're responsible for it morally to say, yeah, you told this person you were going to do what you're going to do. Right. But legally, you know, what can they really do? Fight it. Come with They better bring some good money with them. <laughs> right. Okay. What other questions did you have for me? Screening. So now my biggest thing is I have it under contract. How do I screen tenant buyers? So with the wholesale, I'm Facebook Marketplace. I have a, a buyer's list. But when you're doing a subject to how do you find the person that's going to live in it? Same thing. Good old fashioned marketing. You know, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo, um, 
uh, you know, you can have a, actually, you actually put signs out. That's one of the most powerful ways to actually get these signs to say, you know, rent to own, no banks needed, um, you know, three, two, whatever the house is and a phone number. And when you set up that phone number or set up that, you want that to go straight to a voicemail. I mean, you can take that call, but they will blow your, you'll be bombarded with calls. You're going to say, oh, no, I'm going to throw my phone in the trash because they're calling too much. And you don't want right. to be in that position. So, you know, typically I would say set it up on a separate phone number that's dedicated just to those people, goes to a voicemail, give them general information about how your program works. And uh, basically they go from there. So, you know, but the marketing is the same as you would do a wholesale deal. You would market on Facebook Marketplace and all these other sites as well. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. So they would, uh, you know, that's, you would go, you would market it the same way. And, and, and you'll be amazed because the demand is a hundred times bigger than the supply. There's not enough houses for the amount of people to have something down to move into a house. And you're about to get this house for what? Closing costs only basically. Right. So, I mean, do you have an idea what that'll be? Uh, just based off my other deals, anywhere between 700 to 1500 just depends on. So look at that you. under $2,000 for a whole house. Yeah. You know? And so the thing is, too, what I will tell you um, when you are setting this up, when you get it under contract with that uh, seller, the seller side, you want to set it up where you got a little bit of time in between. So say we go sign this deal today on 917. We'll start making our first payment, not October one. We'll make it November one. We'll set it up like that in the contract. So uh, buyer to start making first payment on or before November one, something like that. So you want to have a cushion of time so that you have time to shop to find a tenant buyer to bring the money. So you're not covering that payment. You don't want to start taking over a payment on a house you didn't find a buyer for yet. Okay. And so, so that's one other little hack. And another time, another thing I would do, um, sometimes I just lock it up under contract, start marketing it, and I'll close with the seller or the, the end buyer first and then use their funds to close the deal. But, you know, it just depends on how you set it up. You know, it just depends. Okay. This house going to sell itself. You probably won't have any problem with it. If it was built in 2015, it's clean and ready to go. I don't see anything that could be um, a problem with it, really. Okay. What else? So you got? Uh, my next question. So the biggest scares, uh, what are some of the cons to doing a subject to? The biggest one I heard was bankruptcy. And how do I prevent? I mean, I can't prevent somebody from filing bankruptcy, but how do I cover myself? In that process, if the deed is in my name and they file bankruptcy, I lose the house, right? Yeah. So what I would do, I mean, from what I, I haven't come across that situation yet, but I do have an extra document that I have them sign off it with at closing saying that they're not contemplating bankruptcy or not in bankruptcy now. And if they were to file bankruptcy, they agree to leave this house out of it. I mean, I don't know if that'll work or hold up, but that's what I've been doing for right now as far as that. But I would ask that question to the uh, real estate attorney to try to get a you know more definitive answer to see if there's something more solid. But that's the way I've been doing it as of right now. Okay. Hopefully they don't file bankruptcy. <laughs> and right. They do, leave this house out of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so okay. that, that's, that, that is one of the things that you can come across as far as that. Okay. And then when you structured your agreement between you and the seller, did your attorney set up this contract or did you use a track contract? How did you do your agreement? Did you kind of build it your own? So, yeah, I have an actual um, agreement. It's a purchase and sales agreement that I use for these type of deals. And it's at wokerealestate.com. It's just a long form uh, purchase and sales agreement. It's a uh, two sided and it basically just breaks everything down. It just uh, goes in and tell you everything, you know, how we're going to close on it. And you can you can actually close any type of deal with this contract. But it's just uh, it's not set up by the attorney, but you can use it in all 50 states. OK. Now, Oklahoma is an abstract state and I've asked local investors here, you know, have you done subject twos? And everybody pretty much just steers away from it. Is there any laws that you're aware of in any of the states that kind of prohibit subject twos that I need to know about? Uh, so, no, I haven't seen any laws that prohibit it. I mean. It's just more. It's all like I say, it's legal stuff. That's why you go through an attorney. So if you know you say if you messed up and you did everything totally wrong, but you went through an attorney. Guess what? We got a layer of protection. My attorney right there. It ain't just me out here in the wilderness. My attorney closed it. If I got to go to court, he coming with me. 
You see okay. what I'm saying? That's why you want to go through uh, having an attorney with you. So that it's not like, oh, I just made up some stuff, closed <laughs> the deal, did this kitchen top uh, closing, and everybody wondering, how do I do this? How do I pull this off? And they mad at me. Right. So, and that's one of the ways, you know, and that's why it's better to do it that way because you want that layer of protection and they're going to make sure it's legal. And if it ain't legal, I ain't do it. They did it. Okay. <laughs> I sure. had legal protection at the time. And so you're going to have legal, they right there going to get their feet caught to the fire too if they do something illegal. Sure. But like, I, but I wouldn't say, no, it's not illegal. You can do it in all 50 states. All right. Now, so at first I wasn't thinking about staying in the deal. Now that you said I could possibly get cash flow off of it, if I stay in the deal, what are the lingering, I guess, expenses that I need to expect to pay? And would you recommend that I have like a build up somewhere in the bank, like 10 grand or more just to you know, support this house? Like what's your recommendation to stay in the deal? Yeah, for staying in the deal, that's why you get a down payment from that uh, tenant buyer that's going to move in there. Say they give you 10 grand down, keep half of that for yourself and the other half uh a just in case fund or something, whatever, you know, it's not like something's going to pop up. But when you actually put this uh, lease option agreement together, it states in there that they're responsible for the maintenance and repairs. It okay. already says that in there. The, the way mine is written up is it, it states that they are 100 percent responsible for the maintenance and repairs of the property. And so it relieves you of it. But, you know, say if the roof go bad, you know, something it's something they can't handle. I'm not going to leave them out to dry. I'm going to help them out. Just being honest. That's what I would do. But right. legally on the paperwork, you agree to take full responsibility for the maintenance repairs of this property. OK. OK. But yeah, you do want to keep something behind just in case, though. You don't want to be out there in the wilderness like, oh, man, I wonder what happened. Ooh, uh, they didn't trick me. <laughs> OK. You know, always be in a win win situation. Right. Uh, wrap around. So this wrap around mortgage. Uh, is this something that I have to go to a bank to file a wrap around mortgage or do I have to go to their actual lender, whoever they have the loan with to do a wrap around mortgage? So it's the same as a subject too. it's just an extra document that gives that layer of protection to show that there's another note. That's all. They're going to create a note that's going to be identical to the note that is written with the current lender to just say okay. it's the same thing. That's all it is. It, that's that's the whole thing with having the wrap around. That's why they call it a wrap around. It wraps around the current loan that's in place. Okay. So they kind of get attorney doing the wrap around or create that. Yes. Oh, the, okay. the real estate attorney creates. So so all you need to really get this deal going is the purchase and sales agreement, and then you need to get that uh, authorization to release information. You're in the woke real estate investors group, correct? follow you. <laughs> so there you go. So if you look in there, that, that document is in there, that authorization to release information, that file is uh, in the file section in the group there. You need that and that purchase the sales agreement signed off from him for now. When you get ready to go close it, that's when you're going to need that, need those other documents. So you don't have to worry about that stuff. You let, you know, you have that done at, with the attorney's office. Gotcha. You can either use what they draw for you or you can get the package that I have on my site. Okay. And just have them, you know, look over and make sure it's compliant with the state and uh, make sure everything's legit. And they're going to probably add another disclosure of some type, you know, saying that, you know, who they represent, things like that. So, like I said, a lot of this stuff is a lot of legal mumbo jumbo. But that's why we have an attorney to handle that legal mumbo jumbo, because right. I'm not an attorney. You're not an attorney. We ain't going to pay to be attorneys. We let them do their job. We just find good deals, lock them up and get these uh, goose to start laying these golden eggs. Exactly. <laughs> what do you so think of the rent for? That's what I was going to ask you. What do you think of the rent for? Uh, not too much more than the mortgage. Probably seventeen hundred on the top end. So you see here. Okay, so you got fourteen sixty nine, and you think it'll rent for? And that's the thing too. So um, when it comes to these deals, I actually get more than the market rents. All every one of them I have out get. So like if it's say nine hundred is about what the market rent is, I'm probably getting twelve hundred, eleven fifty to twelve hundred. All of them. They beat it on price when I sold it. They beat the market on price and they beat the market as far as the rentals. I don't know if I've just been getting lucky or what, but, you know, I don't say any numbers. See, that's the way I do it. When I even, uh, you know, put it out to a tenant buyer, I okay. ask them and they do, you know. So basically what I would do, uh, say I get a tenant buyer that's interested in looking at the house and they got 10000 down, something reasonable, because I always check that before I even send them to a house. Okay. Um, they say they got 10000 down, 20000 down, some number. They go look at the house. They like the house. I send them an application and they actually fill it out right on. And on that application, it's, it asks them how much can they put down? What's the most they can pay on a monthly basis? And they'll put on there what that is. 
Right. And then, uh, you know, it just asks them how soon you're looking to move, like some basic, real simple questions. And then once they get those questions asked, I, I formulate three offers that I send them back. OK. And I'll send it back. to. I think I did a video on it. Matter of fact, I think I did. Yeah, it's a video on here. I'll tag you in it if, if I can find it. Uh, there's a video that I did on it, how I send back three multiple offers for them and say that uh, actually, you know, if you put this much down, we can do this much a month. If you put this much down, we can do this much a month. So it basically gives them some terms. Right. Basically. In fact, I might be able to pull up one right here to show you what I'm talking about. So it makes it kind of like I made an offer to them, but I didn't just uh, they 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 tell me what they can do. But I just kind of formulated offers right around what they can do because they might have more. They might say I got ten thousand down, but they can come up with more. They don't mean they can't come up with more. People right. got money and rich uncles and all type of stuff out here. Right. Right. Rich uncle. Call your rich uncle up and tell him give him some money, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I'll be looking at it. Let me see here. Uh application i gotta cheat and pull it up because i think i have something in here that'll kind of help you out when you're dealing with them but you know that screening is important because i don't want to because a lot of people going to call you about i want to rent it how much to rent we're not right. looking for, we're looking for people who we're trying to help you become a homeowner you okay. know we that, that's the whole thing you want to make sure that you're when you're screening these people that are going to be calling you and stuff like that um and are you marking the total house price up more than what it's worth so like if the note if the mortgage owed right now is only 188 are you marketing it for 195 or yeah so i would sell it for more than what it is because you know that's the thing the price that's the only number i put out so like if you know you're getting it for uh 188 i'm putting it out for two 204 or 199 or you know something over that I want to put it up you know i don't know what you have to see what the you say the r of a 215 wait a minute right for more than that you might, yeah, I'll go about 205 or something. You know what I mean? To see what you can get. They're going to make an offer anyway. And they're not really that price sensitive. They're more so sensitive to their down payment and what their monthly payments are. And sometimes they're not even sensitive to that. Right. Okay. So you know, every one of them that I put out, they I beat the price on it. So let me see here. Share screen. Let me see if I'm going to mess this up and break the computer here. <laughs> Share screen. Uh, and you pulling up the options part that you sent to them, right? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Take that off. Oh, get that off. All right. So uh, let me see. Can you see that? No. Uh, it's real tiny. I see it say option one, two, and three. How can I blow my screen up? I think you got uh, So yeah, it does have three options. I don't know if you can see that. So uh, three options here. How do I make this screen bigger? Technology. I don't know. Is if that, that your desktop? Hit the maximize in the top right hand corner. Up here? Oh, there should be a, yeah, well, you can go there too. It should be a percentage thing. You can make it 100%, oh, yeah. 150%. It sure is. Technology. Look at that. See, that's why you're on the dream team. We're going <laughs> to keep you around. So there we go. Can you see that now? Yeah. Okay. Nice and big there. So say this person here, he already went through the process. He went through the screening. He said, yeah, I got 10,000 down. And then he said, uh, you know, he went and saw the house. He liked the house. So then he went and applied. He filled out the application. Just gives his background and where he works at. And I pull his background check, you know, see where he works at and all that good stuff. And so basically when we get to this point here, that's where, you know, I tell them we're reviewing your application. We have several options that may be available for you. Option one, that's the price of the house, non-refundable, 10000 and the balance will be that much. And he can only pay 500 a month on an 18-month term. Option two, see the price goes up a little bit, but the down payment goes down a little bit. So that kind of helps them out. And the, pay, the monthly goes up a little bit. And he get a shorter amount of term. So basically, I created three terms that I don't care which one of he's he would take. I would agree to any one of them. If he want to put five thousand down and keep more money, give me more cash flow. I'd rather get the cash flow anyway. Right. But it it, it changes, you know, the price and everything. So it right. just it's just little things, and you can formulate that. That's why it's creative real estate. You create it out of thin air. So does this make sense? How I just kind of just gave him a a, a a offer out of scratch. Yep. So you do price. Uh, non-refundable option, the total balance. Of After he puts his down payment, yep. After the down payment. But you know, and your monthly is always going to be bigger than what your monthly is going out, no matter what it is. Now, so, somebody, so if your monthly payment, like the monthly payment you have of fourteen sixty nine, you know, your monthly never going to go below that, no matter what. You might start at 1500 or, you know, 1700 or some number up in that range. I wouldn't even go 1500 I would go more than that because I still like to have a little bit of cushion. Even if it's just a hundred dollars cash flow, I'd rather get that than have nothing. Cause you know, there's always some gotchas in this stuff. 
Right. Right, right. You don't know what they're going to do in this house or with the house. You know, I'd rather have something coming in better than nothing. Okay. So, so, uh, so this how I would. So this house here, I own free and clear though. So I don't, I don't care what he did with this house. <laughs> I, I bought the house for sixteen thousand. So he could do any of these options. I'm good. He gave me ten, th- ten grand down. I'm already pretty much out the deal. Right. So it, it didn't matter. You know what I mean? So that's just this particular deal. But it just if you got a deal like that one and you know what your numbers got to be. That's why I formulate something like this to say, you know, and then down here, it also tells them to close any of the above options. There would be a non-refundable option amount. The attorney closing fee of two fifty, because I already know that's what it costs. It might be three hundred there. I don't know. You need to ask your attorney what they would cl- charge you to close it. Uh, the first month rental amount and a fifty dollar application fee. The home will be sold as is. Monthly payments are due on the twenty eighth and lay on, late on the first of the month. Then it's just a general spill. And then I ask them uh, which of them will work best for him, and then he he'd say which one he can do, and we go from there. We draw it up and set up an appointment to close through the real estate attorney. Does that make sense? Yep, sure does. But that's all stuff down the line, you know. And I don't want to get too far out into wilderland. We got to get it locked up first, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so, do you have uh, everything you need as far as uh, to get the deal done? You think you have the purchase and sales agreement and the uh, authorization to release information? I gotta go get it from wokerealestate.com, but yes. All right, there you go. So that did you have any other questions or anything for me before I let you roll out? Yes. What if he? What if my tenant buyer chooses to move in the middle of? <sighs> I'm going to be so sad for you if that happens. You know why? Why? Because you're going to move out and you're going to go find another tenant buyer and get another ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 down non-refundable for no reason. That's why you stay in the deal for that reason right there. Oh, they stay in there two years. I don't like the house. I found a bigger house. We're moving to Florida, whatever. You got to go okay. find another tenant buyer, get another non-refundable. And that's another goose to keep laying those golden eggs. That's why these deals are so beautiful. My mentor that trained me on some of this stuff here actually got one house that had five different tenant buyers in it over the years. Five different down payments, five <laughs> monthly cash flows all on one house. And it just now come due that it needs a roof for it. Wow. And it was, and it, this house just been paying out money from day one. That's why these deals are so powerful. That's why people pay thousands of dollars to learn this stuff. Because I mean, look at what you can do. You could change right. your whole life and family tree dealing with this stuff. This is serious. Right. This is better than going to college. Why are we going to college anymore? I'm going to learn that real estate. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube university is college YouTube. now. That's right, baby. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube university. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I think that was all of my questions. Warranty, debt to income, screening tenants, marketing for tenant buyers. You said do the signs, uh, bankruptcy, just a little clause in there, and put in a trust. And my real estate attorney going to do most of the work for me anyway. Most of the work. And I also do coaching as well. If you need any hand with like getting any of that stuff worked out where I can actually, you know, hold your hand through every little piece of the deal and say, oh, this is what you do next. This is what you do next. This is what you do next. I, do I that. need that. Where's that payment at? How do I go sign that's up? At, that's at Woke Real Estate okay. as well. So all of that stuff, you know, for any kind of coaching and stuff like that to go through these deals, because, you know, it can always it's always some gotchas in this stuff. You know, I can't predict what's going to happen next. You know, right. it's always something going on with these deals. It's always something. And I can't, I don't know. It's always something. What right. they gonna do next? <laughs> I, I don't know, because it's all it's some surprises. You know, there's always something going on. So I just try to roll with the punches and deal with the problems as they come up. That's all we can do in life, right? That's true. That's true. All and right. then make sure you got an agreement to uh cover you in the long time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it looked like I got some questions over here. Let's see what I got here. Um, let's see. Oh, it's people watching this. Look, I, I didn't realize we live live. Oh, yeah, you're live. You're in live in the Woke Real Estate Investor Group. Thanks. What up, though? Let's see here. When you purchase a property, how can you avoid putting a property in your name? Is this a question linked to what is being discussed? You never put a property in your name. You always, how I was taught and how I always learned, because I study from the greats. I, I didn't come up with none of this stuff. I just study from the greats. Always put a property in a trust. That's just from what I say for, you know, the protection. And then I usually have my, the way I have mine set up, I have my, uh, I have a trust and then I have one of my LLCs be the beneficiary and I'm underneath that. So I got several layers before they get to me. That's how I set mine up. So some, some predator or creditor want to come after me for something, you got to go digging. <laughs> You'll be practicing. So mm-hmm. yeah. So avoid putting it in your name. So y'all will put it into a uh, trust. Let's see here. Somebody say facts and that's that. All right. Did you have any other questions or anything for me? How long does that take to put in a trust? If you just get a property under contract, can you put it in a trust like before the closing? 
Well, that's part of the closing. That is the closing. See, the trust is born when the document is recorded at the courthouse. The trust don't even exist. It's created from thin air. It's just paper until they record that puppy at the courthouse. Now the trust is now a living, breathing document. Until it's recorded, it don't exist. Okay, so on my purchase and sale agreement, I'm not going to put Diamond Trust. I'm going to put my name and then the trust is created at closing? Uh, so what I do, I have an LLC set up just for to be trustee on property. Um, I have my that LLC as trustee as the buyer and then that seller name as the seller. That's how I set mine up. And then I go in and I, I close it that way. So you already have an LLC created. You put the LLC name on the purchase agreement and then at closing it transfers to a trust. Yes, it's going to stay. That is the trustee. So that's the buyer on my purchase and sales agreement. The name of the so. My LLC as trustee is the buyer. Trustee. Okay. So when it closes, that's the only thing that's going to uh, show is the trustee name. Now, you can put an individual there. I just have mine set up as LLCs. You can put a person. If you got a person that you trust that doesn't have your same last name, that's out of state or something, you, mm -hmm. somebody you, trust, you can have them be trustee on a property. Okay. So that's not a problem. Um, let me see here. How do you feel about renting to Section 8? I feel <laughs> about not doing no rents. I do lease options, baby. We don't do no rents. <laughs> so other than that uh did you say you're done with your questions for today yep i think you you got me straight and then i just need to go to this woke real estate.com and i'm probably gonna well i am gonna post it today so start seeing what i get as soon as you get them on the contract start marketing that puppy and you and you know and you know it's, it's verbiage you want to put in there as well you know no banks you know uh down payment is required i let them know that so they don't even waste my time down payment is required you can choose to say that number or just do it the way I do it and ask them what they can do. I don't put out a number as far as a down payment. I'm kind of, okay. cool. but that's, you know, a little more advanced strategy stuff. It's not that it's not that hard when you look at the whole thing. So, and don't put the monthly uh, payment on there either. Just put, so I would just literally say house for sale, no banks, no down or down payment required, but don't put the monthly rate on there. Yeah. So once I so say, yeah, I will put it out something like that. And so once you start getting responses and you get on the phone with them after listening to their voicemail, I'm like, yeah, I'm calling about your house over here. They were built in 2015. I want to know if I can go ahead and get it, man. I got a little money. I got to say, I want to buy their house. And so you get on the phone with them. You, you screen them. You ask them some questions. What do you think you could put towards a down payment? Well, I got 10,000 down. Or they might give you a rebuttal and say, well, I don't know how much I need to put down. And what I would say to them is, the, the more you put down, the lower your monthly payment could possibly be. You know, we just asked for something reasonable. What do you think you can put towards a down payment? And if they say they can put something down, I go ahead and let them look at the house from that point. They got something reasonable. They come like, oh, I got a thousand dollars. You ain't mm -hmm. get a house of mine for no thousand dollars. That's how mm -hmm. it is. They, get, they tell you some reasonable number, five, 10, 20, whatever they tell you. You let them take check out the house, apply for the house, and then you go through with the rest of it. It's really that simple. Okay. All right. Well, I think you answered all my questions. I will surely be in touch with you to let you know how I locked it up. And this will be my first subject, too. All right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to be proud for him, be rooting for him and say. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> all right, Chris, well, I appreciate your time today and thank you for helping me out. All right. Thank you. You have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. And for those just watching here, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're looking at the subscribing channel. Follow if you want on the follow channel. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's all of them. Plus, if you're looking for leads, if you're getting a problem with, man, I need some leads, I need some leads, I can't get enough. Search for any property address and unlock a wealth of detailed information, MLS access, and a whole lot more. Go to wokesource.com. Check that out. It's AKA prop stream. Check that out. Get a free seven day trial. Just go to wokesource.com, set that up. And you'll be like, man, I should have had this a long time ago. Cause you can pull up to 10,000 records, 10,000, you know, what can you do with 10,000 records? I mean, you can market to them. You can call them. You can text message them. You can do all this stuff, do that and see if that works out for you. That'll help you with your leads. And if you haven't joined the free woke real estate investors group, there you go. Do that. So I'm about to get about here and do some more woke stuff. Do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Peace out, family. And we have. And
we have Mr. I stay broke.